in this video, I'm going to be replacing the damaged CPU socket on this LJ1150 Gigabyte Z97 Mini ITX motherboard. Now, I got this board off eBay for $50 um, because I thought it would be, uh, you know, easy to fix uh, a bent pin in the socket or something because, you know, I have gotten uh, boards with bent pins in the socket and straightened them out and had it work just fine. However, in this case, it turns out that one of the pins in the socket is actually missing. And with that pin missing, of course, it would not boot uh, with a CPU installed. It wouldn't even post or anything. Um, so unfortunately, that means that this CPU socket is going to need to be replaced. So if we go ahead and take a very close look at the socket, you can see right there is where our missing pin is. So let me see if I can get a better angle on that. So yeah, you can sort of make it out uh, that there is indeed a missing pin there, and there is also a bent pin right here, but that of course could be straightened out relatively easily, um, and that of course is not causing the issue. Um, it is that missing pin uh, that's causing our problem. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to desolder this LJ1150 CPU and then replace it with a new LJ1150 CPU that I got off AliExpress from China. So as you can see here, this is the exact same type of CPU socket that's currently on the board. You can see there, there's that little tab that sits right next to that screw. And you can indeed see that on my new socket, that same exact tab is there. So I'll go ahead and take off this cover here so we can actually see the CPU, or uh, see, see the CPU socket rather. Um, so you can see here that it is indeed the exact same socket. So go ahead and take a close look here. You can see that that's the same as that, and it all matches up perfectly. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is get my board on my board preheater right here, and then begin the process of heating the board up and preparing to remove the original socket. Now, of course, before I do that, I need to uh, remove this uh, metal piece and the little retention bracket on the back of the board. Um, but yeah, once I do that and remove, you know, anything that can be removed like this battery um, and this Wi-Fi card right here, um, once I get all those things off, we can go ahead and begin the process of removing the chip. Now I have done uh, a CPU socket installation before. Um, you can actually see it in my modbook upgrade video where I installed a socket onto a MacBook 5.2 logic board and it's basically the same thing as soldering on a BGA chip. Of course you have to heat the bottom of the board more than you normally would and heat the top of the board over the socket less than you normally would uh, to prevent melting it um, but overall it's actually a pretty easy process. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff removed off the board, get the board on the board preheater and get it heating up to um, a good hot temperature, and then we'll begin the process of removing the original defective CPU socket. So I'll go ahead and resume the video. All right, as you can see, my board preheater is now up to temperature, and I've removed uh, the metal bracket around the CPU socket, um, as well as the Wi-Fi card right there. So now we can begin the process of removing the CPU socket. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put my camera in the tripod, and then we'll begin the process of removing the socket. All right, so as you can see, my camera's now on the tripod here, and I'm gonna increase the temperature of my board for here a bit to about 200 degrees Celsius. And uh, then, once it warms all the way up to 200 degrees, we'll begin the process of removing the CPU socket. All right, so I decided to go down to a uh, temperature of 180 degrees just to be safe. Uh, I don't want these capacitors here to get too hot. Um, that is, of course, my main concern uh, at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and start by applying some flux to the perimeter of the socket. So we'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so I think that should be enough flux. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is put my hot air uh, nozzle over top of the socket and then heat it at about 
250 degrees Celsius. So let's go ahead and put that on. This nozzle is just barely big enough to cover that CPU socket. So now that we got that in place, let's go ahead and turn it on and start heating it up. Alright, so the socket is now loose and it should come right off the board. So I'm going to go ahead and move the hot air out of the way and lift it off. Look at that, it came right off. Go ahead and decrease the temperature here on the board for here. Turn off my hot air. And now we can go ahead and clean up all the pads on the board. And uh, then we'll be ready to solder the new chip on. Or the new socket, rather. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And, uh, yeah, just use my soldering iron with some solder weight. Alright, so it looks like we got all of the solder off of those pads. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn that off real fast here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up all this old flux using some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. Alright, so that's pretty darn clean. So now the next thing we're going to do is apply some new flux and then we can go ahead and solder the new CPU socket onto the board. So I'll go ahead and resume the video. Alright, so I've gotten ahead and gotten the board back up to temperature here. So now we'll just apply some flux to the pads on the board and uh, then prepare to solder on the new chip. Now normally I don't apply a bunch of flux like this uh, when doing a BGA chip, however since this chip or this socket will actually suck in most of the flux, I need to uh, apply a little bit more than normal. But I'm still going to go ahead and uh, wipe away a little bit of it with a uh, paper towel because it is quite globby on there. All right, and that should be just about good there. So now we'll get our new socket and place it onto the board. And notice I'm not actually putting flux on the socket and that's because it'll just soak it in when I heat it up anyway. So I've got to just put it down on the board. So I got to make sure it doesn't hit those capacitors. And just line it up. All right, so go here and line it up. Alright, and that looks to be lined up just about perfectly. So now I'm going to go ahead and align the hot air nozzle over top of the socket once again, and then heat it up to solder it onto the board. Alright, and the 
the chip looks to be soldered onto the board successfully. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my hot air and let the chip cool down, or the socket rather, I keep saying chip, because uh, that's what I'm used to soldering. But yeah, it looks like all the balls are melted. So yeah, I'll go ahead and let it cool down and then we will be able to test it. So, I'm gonna turn that off. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and let the chip cool down and then I'll resume the video. All right, so as you can see here, the CPU socket is soldered on just fine. And uh, as you can see, I've also cleaned a bit of the flux away uh, from around the side of the socket. Um, and yeah, it's obviously soldered on just fine. I can pick up the whole board by it. So now what we can do is I'm gonna install uh, the metal brackets and uh, then we'll be able to install a CPU, plug in the board and give it a test. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that ready and then we'll go ahead and test the board. All right, so as you can see here, I've got the board ready. Um, I've got a CPU installed, of course, and a CPU cooler on it. Um, so now, uh, I've also got a Pico PSU connected. So now I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to power, and then we will turn it on and see if the board actually works. Now keep in mind, uh, before this, the system did not post at all. Um, it would just shut off, turn on, turn off, and just not post at all with the original socket installed. So now that I've gotten my AC power connected, go ahead and power the machine on. All right, system is now running. Okay. Oh, and we've got video. Look at that, the machine is working. Let's go ahead and get into the bio setup here. Um, let's see. It is indeed working. Let's see if I can view the specs here. Ah, here we go. All right, you can see that the CPU frequency is 39 megahertz or 3900 megahertz. Um, so that's normal. Let's see. There should be a way to view the system specs here. I don't know why it doesn't actually show you the CPU or anything, but hey, it's working. So yeah, there we have it. The socket replacement was successful. So you can see, of course, the board is running. We're in the BIOS. And uh, yeah, that has been the successful CPU socket replacement on this Gigabyte Z97 Mini ITX motherboard. So. Hope you enjoyed this video.